Good morning, everybody. It's Paul here. It is Sunday morning, and I didn't even plan to record anything this morning, okay? It is way too early for this. I am still working on my first cup of coffee. I just wanted to very briefly talk about threads and meta, and especially meta, how they are blocking links in some countries, um, such as Canada, for example. Anytime you post a link from a legitimate news source um say for example the guardian or reuters or something like that uh, it doesn't go through if i'm on my facebook page it goes to the post will go but it won't actually appear and now it appears that when i'm doing this on threads that uh, the post just fails to upload completely which is absolutely ridiculous and I do want to talk a little bit about why this is detrimental and why this is bad, but we will get to that in a minute. First off, let's just get into showing you exactly what is going on here. So this is my threads, as you can see, and I've got a couple of stories open here, a couple of posts. I've got one from The Guardian. The reason I wanted to share this post this morning is because it's, it's a very important post in how it discusses how social media is very much on the cusp of responsibility for a lot of what is happening in the riots over in the UK and with social disturbance around the world because it actually takes a look at how broadcasters have responsibilities with what they can and can't show. They have responsibilities with regards to the watershed. They have responsibilities with deciding when the showing violence how much of it, whether it should be pixelated, so on and so forth. And there's none of that responsibility when it comes to social media. It is just a torrent, a flood, a water hose of constant bombardment. And this story is about a guy who was at his 18th birthday party, saw all this stuff on social media and decided, I'm going to go partake too. And he did go and partake and he caused damage uh, to property during a riot. He's only 18, it was on his birthday, and he got 20 months in prison for it. And his excuse was, it's okay, everybody else is doing it. Which is, you know, to me, the battle cry of the mentally inefficient or the intellectually lazy. It's okay, everybody else is doing it, therefore I'll do it too. I'm a lemming. I know lemmings don't actually jump off cliffs. That's an urban myth. But yeah, I'm a lemming. So anyway. And what I wanted to show you was that if I take the link to this Guardian post and I go to my threads and I try to share this, it doesn't even give me the, what you call it, the, um, the little image, the preview image that it should give me when I'm sharing because it just will not allow it to be shared. And if I hit post, it says fail to upload. Now let's go to Reuters, which is one that I also can't share from my Facebook page. And let's try exactly the same thing. And this one works. If I hit post, that will go to my stream. There's lots of reasons for this. Um, let me first say before I get into this next little bit that I am a huge, huge advocate of free press. I am a huge advocate of supporting the free press. I am a huge advocate of paying them what they deserve for the content that they produce. How ever let's do it right okay having governments decide that to charge independent third parties for a link a link that drives traffic to your source is absolutely fundamentally wrong it is daylight ro robbery it is ass backwards it is putting the cart before the horse in terms of how you make money and it is very fundamentally disingenuous and gets the value of what journalism is completely wrong. I could go into this in depth. I'm just going into it in a little bit here. If you want a bit more on my opinion on it, I wrote a post back in November of 2023. It's also part of the podcast, so you can listen to it if you don't want to you know, spend the, what is it, six minutes reading it. You can listen to the crappy tones of me reading my own posts out uh, on the podcast, just to post, go find that elsewhere. But the long and the short of it to this is, for me, is this, right? Even if you ask Tim Berners-Lee, the guy who basically, you know, invented the World Wide Web, charging for 
links so that they can't be shared freely fundamentally breaks the internet. To quote him, I am concerned that the code risks breaching a fundamental principle of the web by requiring payment for linking between certain content online. This is not my first foray into this. Many years ago, probably 20 years ago or nearly two decades ago anyway, when I was living in Denmark, I got into a huge spat because a friend of mine had a website and he linked to another website. Uh, it was called crack.dk, K-R-A-K.dk. And at the time, I don't know what crack is now. I don't even know if it's still around. But at the time, crack was the equivalent of Google Maps in Denmark. And you could link to your business and the whole lot. And he linked from his website, just a hyperlink to their website. And they sent him and many other website owners a demand for payment. Even though he was driving traffic to them. And yes, he was showing, yes, when you got there, you could see where his place was. But he was driving value to them. And their pages were ad laden. They were getting the tracking data. They were getting the two or three advertisements that were shown around the page, the whole lot. So they wanted to have their cake and eat it. And that is what is happening with publishers today. They want to have their cake and eat it. If you believe for a second that the value of your headline, sorry, that the value of your journalistic article, your news piece, whatever it is, is in the headline, then you're in the wrong fucking business. The value is in the article and the opinion and the reporting. The headline is the trigger that draws you in for it. A good analogy, or maybe not a good analogy, but an analogy that I gave once was that, look, if you walk into a, a corner store and they still happen to have a, a shelf that sells magazines and newspapers and stuff, if you look at the cover of a newspaper and you read the headline and the headline says, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, fell off a fucking horse or whatever the hell it says, right? You don't have to pay for that newspaper when you walk out, even though you've read the headline, because the headline doesn't tell you the entire fucking story. The headline is the impetus. It is the thing that entices you to, in case of a newspaper, to buy, in case of online, to click through to the website to read the whole damn thing. So when somebody is sharing your links for free, driving you traffic, you want to charge them and charge at the other end, that is just completely wrong. Your business model is fucked up. It is upside down. And the worst thing for me is this, is I, for the last 20 years, 20, more than 20 years that I have been writing content online, but since Facebook has existed, since Meta has existed, you can count on the number of I can count on one hand the number of times I have agreed with decisions that Facebook and Meta have made. Well, they were Facebook for the longest time. They're Meta now. That I have agreed with decisions that they have made. You can count them on one hand. While it's detrimental to free speech, I really do think not being able to share links like this is detrimental to free speech. It is detrimental to how the internet functions. It is detrimental to civic uh, responsibility, because in order to be a good civilian, you need to be informed about what is going on. But if people cannot share news sources on their primary methods of communication, that is fundamentally bad for society and the internet. So I agree with Meta for not wanting to share them, because they shouldn't have to pay for this stuff. And frankly, the law in Canada that requires them to pay for it is simply wrong because it is not made uh, with an understanding of A, the value of the internet, B, what a link actually means, C, the civic detriment of doing it, and D, the fact that for so many years, so many news sources, so many publishers have been unable to get their heads out of their asses and build a business model that functions since the year 2000. They haven't been able to, right? Because they don't want to.
They don't want to. They don't want to spend the money. They don't want to hire the right people. And that is part of... Yeah. Anyway, because either they don't want to or they're incapable of it. They're locked in their time warp about what their, their media is. I don't know. I don't know why they won't do it or why they can't grasp it. Anyway, I hadn't planned on waking up and choosing violence this morning. I'm not yet caffeinated. It's too early in the morning, so I'm just going to peace out. Um, that's my rant for this morning. Thank you. Hey, this is Paulo Flaherty, and I want to thank you for watching this video. If you liked this video, please share it with a friend. It's the best way to support what I do. Also, please consider subscribing. It's free, and it will really help me out. Thanks again for watching.